Hi, mathematicians. Miss Neighbors here. I need your help to solve the math problem. Will you please help me? You will, thanks so much. Here's my problem. A friend has challenged me to make some shapes and they gave me all these cool shapes, just like you can see here. The challenge is the shapes that my friend gave me are not the ones they want me to make. I'm not sure what to do. So I'm glad we can think through this problem together. Here are all of the shapes that my friend gave to me. Do you know the names of any of them? Oh, you're right. I heard someone say that they see three triangles. Nice work. What else do you see? Awesome. I heard someone else say that they see two squares. Great work. What other shapes do you notice? Yes, I also noticed that there is a rhombus. Great job. My friend has given me three challenges and each one involves at least one of these shapes. Let's look at the first one. Are you ready? Great, let's go. Here it is. Use two triangles to make a square. Hmm. Before we get started, I'm wondering if you can help me figure out which of these shapes are triangles. Which ones do I use? Oh, I heard someone say that the blue shapes are triangles. But how do we know the blue shapes are triangles? What attributes does a triangle have? Okay, I heard someone say that they're not sure that they remember what the word attribute means. That's okay, let's talk about it. An attribute is a characteristic of a shape. An example would be that a square has four sides. So the number of sides is one of a shape's possible attributes. There are other attributes that a shape can have, such as side lengths, number of angles, and types of angles. Okay, so with that in mind, tell me, what is one attribute of a triangle? That's right. One attribute of a triangle is that it has three sides. We call a shape a triangle if it is closed, meaning all the sides connect at a vertex and the shape has three sides. When I look at these shapes, I can see that each has one, two, three sides. Okay, now I'm convinced that these are the triangles that we'll need for this challenge. We know that we have to use these triangles to make a square. How will we know how to use the triangles to make a square? Wait, that brings up another question. How do we know a shape is a square anyway? Do you know? Whisper it to me. That's right. I heard someone say that we can call a shape a square if it has four right angles or, squ or square corners and four equal sides. When we look at a square, we can see it has equal sides because each side measures three units long. The shape also has four right angles because we can make a square at the vertices. So that's how we know that a square is a square, so to speak. Hmm. So now that we have that straight, how can we use these triangles to make a square? Hmm. Let's play around with the triangles and see if we can figure it out. If I just place the two triangles next to each other, will that make a square? No, they won't. You can see that placing the triangles next to each other without moving them around won't meet our attributes for a square. So that won't work. Oh, I know. What if I rotate them to form a square? Do you think that will work? Let's rotate the triangles and find out. Bingo. When I rotate the triangles so that they meet at their diagonals, I can then slide them together to form a square. So that means that two triangles put together in a certain way can indeed make a square. Oh, that reminds me of something else. I noticed when starting with a square and thinking about how to create triangles from it. Look what happens if I cut a square in half. Cutting a square into halves means to split into two equal parts. What do you see? When I cut the square vertically or horizontally, I make two rectangles. But when I cut the square in half diagonally, I have two triangles. I can also call this decomposing or breaking apart a shape. Just like you can decompose a number such as 10 into six and four, five and five, or two and eight, we can decompose shapes into smaller shapes. Sometimes when I decompose a square, I get two rectangles, and sometimes I get two triangles, depending on how I decompose the shape. Let's see what other shapes we can make by looking at another challenge. Here it is. Use a rhombus and triangle to make a trapezoid. We know what a triangle is. How about a rhombus? What makes a shape a rhombus? Talk to a friend or a trusted adult about your thinking and then whisper it to me. I'll wait. Oh, that's some great thinking I'm hearing out there. Someone said that they think that a rhombus is actually very similar to a square. That's right. For both the rhombus and the square, 
all four sides are equal. So then, what's the difference between a rhombus and a square? Look at the two shapes on the screen and whisper to me what you notice. That's right. Remember, a square has all equal angles, while a rhombus has opposite equal angles. A rhombus is a shape with four equal sides, so we can say a square is a rhombus because it has four equal sides and the opposite angles are equal. But a rhombus is not always a square because all of its angles are not equal. How about a trapezoid? What makes a shape a trapezoid? A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one set of parallel sides. A quadrilateral is a shape with exactly four sides. And when sides are parallel, that means they will never intersect. We can see that the top and bottom sides of the trapezoid will never intersect, so we call them parallel. Okay, now we understand the shapes we're working with, let's think about how we can make a trapezoid using a rhombus and triangle. Thinking back to when we used the triangles to make a square, we found out that we can cut a square in half to obtain two triangles. So that makes me wonder, could we do that with a trapezoid? Could we cut the, cut the trapezoid into halves to get a rhombus and a triangle? Share your thoughts with a friend or a trusted adult, and then whisper them to me. I agree with you. I don't think it will work. If we cut the trapezoid in half vertically, we do not see a rhombus or a triangle. If we cut the trapezoid in half horizontally, we also do not see a triangle or a rhombus. So it looks like we'll have to try a different strategy. What if we place a rhombus on top of a trapezoid? I wonder if that could help us determine how to use the triangle and rhombus together to make the trapezoid. Should we try it? We should. Okay, let's go. Wow, that fits perfectly. That means that a rhombus is a shape that we can use together with another shape to make the trapezoid. Let's see, what shape could fit next to the rhombus? You're right, the triangle fits. This means that we can decompose or break apart a trapezoid into a rhombus and a triangle. That also means we can use a rhombus and a triangle to compose a trapezoid. Challenge met and solved. Excellent thinking. Let's look at the last challenge. Here it is. Use two squares to make a rectangle. Squares and rectangles are similar because they both have right angles and four sides. So what's the difference between a rectangle and a square? I was wondering that too. Talk to a friend or a trusted adult about your thinking and then whisper it to me again. Oh, I'm hearing some great thinking. Let me share some of that with you. I heard someone say that they noticed a difference in the colors of the two shapes. This is true. This rectangle and this square are indeed different colors. I'm wondering if there's another attribute that we can look at beside the color to determine the differences between the rectangle and the square. Oh, someone else said that we could look at the sides. We know that both of these shapes have four sides, so the number of sides doesn't seem to help us determine how they're different. What else can we look at? That's right. We can look at the lengths of the sides, not just the number of sides of each shape. That's where we'll see the difference. If we look at the square, we can see that all four sides are equal. Is this true for the rectangle? Nope. A rectangle does not have four equal sides, but it does have opposite sides that are equal. Opposite sides are sides that are across from each other. In the rectangle, we can see that two of its sides measure four units long and two of its sides measure three units long. Those sides are opposite from each other. A square also has equal opposite sides, so it can also be called a rectangle. But can a rectangle be called a square though? No. A rectangle is not a square because all four of its sides are not equal. Now that we know the difference between our two shapes, how can we make a rectangle using two squares? This one's pretty simple. If I place two squares together, I can make one rectangle. Even though all of the sides are equal, is this shape still a rectangle? Why? Right. Think about what we just talked about opposite sides are equal to each other. So yes, these two squares make one rectangle. Whoa, I feel like I learned so much about shapes with you. Thank you so much for your help. 
Today, we solved three different challenges and we did it by working together and using what we knew about the attributes of shapes to solve problems. We talked about the attributes of triangles, squares, rectangles, rhombuses, and trapezoids. We learned about how we can use smaller shapes to compose larger shapes. Then we looked at how we can decompose shapes into smaller shapes in multiple ways. We can decompose shapes just like we can decompose numbers. Composing and decomposing can help us think about both the attributes of shapes as well as other shapes, how other shapes relate to one another. Today, I want you to find something that's rectangular around your house or environment and spot the two triangles in it. Then try to split a piece of paper in half to form two triangles. You can find shapes everywhere. See you next time.